Okay, let's start my presentation. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ikinari Deguchi. Uh, thank you for coming on my presentation. Uh, I'm a member of Panasonic Automotive Systems Company. I'd like to talk about achieving a software defined multi display system uh, with unified HMI. Okay, this is my first presentation at the meeting, so I'd like to introduce myself briefly. Uh, I'm working for Panasonic Automotive Systems Company uh, for three years, and I'm focusing on graphic-related development, uh, especially display virtualization across multi display. I like watching baseball games, and this year I went watch a game at Koshien Stadium. And I live in Kyoto, so I sometimes go out to Kyoto City uh, for exercise when I have free time. Okay, before I start my presentation, I will introduce the previous presentations about a unified HMI, uh, that is software defined multi display technology. Our company, Panasonic, have introduced the overview of unified HMI at such as yesterday's Jerry Sands SDVEG session. Uh, Panasonic has contributed to automotive grade Linux AGL. Um, AGL is a collaborative open source project that is, bring, that is bringing automakers, suppliers, and technology companies uh, with Linux at its core. In September this year, uh, we integrated some of the feature of unified HMI to AGL and unified code base. And today, I will talk about detailed main technology on unified HMI and how to use unified HMI that has been integrated into AGL UCB. So by listening to this presentation, uh, you can easily try using some of the features of unified HMI. Okay, let's start my presentation. Agenda is as follows. Uh, first, I will talk about why software defined multi display technology unified HMI is needed by automotive industry. A second, I will talk about technical overview of unified HMI. Next, I will explain that we have integrated uh, one of unified HMI's components to AGL UCB. Next, I will talk about how to use RVGPU that is integrated to AGL UCB uh, by illustrating sample use case. Uh, finally, I will talk about the future vision of unified HMI and conclude my presentation. Okay, in the first section, I will provide why automotive industry uh, needs unified HMI. First, uh, before my explanation, uh, please watch the unified HMI concept demo video. HMI is an open source display virtualization technology developed by Panasonic. In this demo, we will show how Unified HMI enables to design and develop entire cockpit UI and UX efficiently across multiple displays without dependency on hardware. Here is a cockpit UI and UX development environment that virtualizes the physical automotive environment. For example, this environment virtualizes a cockpit consisting of AGL and two Yocto Linux to evaluate the cockpit UI and UX across multiple displays. This is a unified HMI associated layout design tool. It enables to develop cockpit UI and UX across multiple displays in the virtual environment. Take this sample graphic application of the Linux Penguin as an example. If you want to change layout of it, you can flexibly move and rescale the application across multiple displays. You can even design across display animations. Once the layout design is complete, you can easily verify the entire cockpit UI and UX in the virtual cabin environment. Now, you can see the designed animation across multiple displays and operating systems. Last, after verification in the cloud virtual environment, the developed cockpit UI and UX can be seamlessly deployed to the physical ECUs with same binary. 
In this way, Unified HMI enables to efficiently develop entire cockpit UI and UX by anyone, from anywhere, without dependency on physical automotive hardware. Therefore, it greatly contributed to reducing lead time and costs of entire cockpit UI and UX development. Okay. Okay, thank you for your watch and uh, thank you for watching Unified HMI demo video. And uh, next I will introduce uh, trends in automotive industry. And uh, in recent years, uh, the number of in vehicle display has been increasing, uh, especially in high end vehicles, uh, for example, the appearance of heads up display, uh, camera monitoring system, and the digitization of information display, such as meters. Uh, this has led to a focus on flexible application display technologies across multiple display. And these technologies are expected to provide new UI and UX possibilities. However, if we want to develop this flexibility using existing uh, graphic frameworks, uh, ad hoc interoperability development of displays for each hardware platform, and it is uh, it's required, so it is very costly and time-consuming. Therefore, uh, in automotive industry, um, there are needs for a software-defined uh, display framework uh, that separates software from hardware. Okay, uh, we developed a software-defined display virtualization platform uh, based on Batai GPU called Unified HMI. And Unified HMI allows for flexible development of the entire cockpit and cabin UI and UX across multiple displays, and it, it is independent of hardware and OS configuration. The entire cockpit of UI and UX is developed using virtual environment and it can be seamlessly deployed to the physical ECU. Okay, uh, let me introduce some values that Unified HMI can provide for both automotive developers and automotive users. Uh, first, automotive developers will be able to agile and software-defined cockpit UI and UX development. And specifically, uh, Unified HMI enables efficient and integrated uh, cockpit UI and UX development and uh, evaluation across multiple displays on virtual environment. Uh, it is independent of hardware and OS configuration. And it is scalable to deploy seamlessly to various scale grades and models. And second, uh, automotive users can experience fast and personalized evaluation with cockpit UI UX. And specifically, uh, users can receive upgraded customer experience from frequent over-the-air updates on UI and UX improvements. In addition, uh, flexible cockpit UI and UX able to be customized according to user preference, uh, no matter of car grades and models. So Unified HMI provide a value mostly for automotive developers, uh, but efficient development using Unified HMI leads to UI and UX experience, uh, which meets user preference. And so it also provides value for automotive users. Okay, next section, I will provide a technical overview of Unified HMI. Uh, unified HMI consists of two main components. The first component is remote virtual GPU device, and we call this RVGPU. It is shown in green box in the figure. And we recently integrated this RVGPU to AGL UCB as a part of unified HMI features. RVGPU can render application remotely in different SOCs or virtual machines 
uh, via network. The second component is distributed display framework. It is shown in yellow box in the figure. Um, this allows flexible layout control of applications across multi display. And in summary, a distributed display framework uh, determines the layout of the applications across multiple display. And LV GPU uh, renders application remotely in different SOCs or virtual machines as needed. And thanks to this system, uh, Unified HMI allows for flexible development of uh, the entire cockpit UI and UX um, across multiple displays and independent of hardware and OS configuration. And the following describes these two components in detail. First is LVGPU. LVGPU uh, is a network extension of virtual GPU uh, that is commonly used for GPU virtualization in virtual machines. LVGPU can be further divided into two components, uh, LVGPU proxy uh, presents on the left side, and LVGPU renderer uh, it is presents on the right side of the figure. Uh, LVGP proxy uh, transfers GPU commands uh, generated by OpenGL ES and to other SOCs or virtual machines. And LVGP renderer uh, receives GPU commands uh, transferred by LVGP proxy uh, and renders application graphic using that commands. LVGPU also creates virtual input device uh, such as mouse and touch and keyboard uh, using U input devices. Uh, if you touch remote display, uh, input events can be sent to application via U input device. Okay, next, uh, next is distributed display framework. As shown in below figure, uh, distributed display framework maps uh, multiple cockpit physical displays into a single large virtual, dis uh, virtual screen. And by placing application on the virtual screen, uh, you can control the layout uh, such as placement, uh, size, and uh, display orders uh, multiple applications. Uh, if applications are placed across multiple display uh, on the virtual screen, uh, LVGP renders those applications remotely in the corresponding SNCs or virtual machines. Our next section, I will provide the past and future unified HMI's contribution to AGL UGB. And in September, uh, we integrated LVGPU, uh, shown in the green box. Uh, it is already available in the latest version of AGL UCB on Plickly Pike. And specific usage of integrated LVGPU on AGL uh, will be introduced in the next section. Uh, in the future plan, uh, distributed display framework uh, shown in yellow box uh, will be committed by first half of next year. The application uh, shown in blue uh, it, uh, it is currently only available for Qt application, uh, but uh, it will be available for AGL flat applications uh, by second half of next year. And we will continue to make contributions uh, in bringing more advanced features of unified HMI to AGL UCB. Okay, next section. I will provide how to use uh, integrated LVGPU features on AGL. A learning LVGPU on AGL can be implemented in total seven steps. Uh, those steps contain from preparing your environment uh, to rendering applications remotely. And in this section, I will introduce details of those seven steps and focusing on differences from the AGL official document. 
Okay, step one is about how to prepare your environment. Uh, next slide to learn RBGPU on AGL. And in addition, I will talk about uh, flow of RBGPU commands. Uh, currently, uh, RBGPU supports three platforms, uh, x86, uh, Raspberry Pi 4, and AGL Defiance hardware. And to use RBGPU, uh, you have to prepare at least two of the above three platforms and use one as the sender and the others as the receiver. And sender and uh, applications are running on the sender and application graphics are rendered in receiver. The sender and receiver can be changed as you like. But even if you don't have any ECU devices, um, and if you only have an Ubuntu PC, uh, you can easily use LVGPU by using Ubuntu PC and x86 emulation. And all used platforms must be connected to the same network and accessible by IP address and connection port. The following figure is a flow of RBGP command. Uh, first, uh, run RBGP proxy command on the sender side and run RBGP renderer command uh, on the receiver side. And then a virtual DLM device uh, related but, uh, but I GPU, uh, call this uh, card X here. Uh, it's created and RV GPU is connected to the network. Uh, on the sender side, uh, if Western and Wayland applications uh, use this device card X, uh, those applications will be rendered in the receiver display. After the transfer, uh, those applications uh, displayed on the receiver uh, can be operated by, for example, touch and keyboard uh, using your input devices. Okay, once the environment is ready, and step two, it is needed to download the software and necessary to run RBGPU on AGL. First, uh, you need to download the AGL software and uh, referring to downloading AGL software section in the AGL official documentation and uh, shown in this URL. And after that, uh, you have to get the RBGP recipes, uh, which were recently integrated. Uh, RBGPU is in the meta AGL devil directory and it is available in master branch or after version 16.0.2, uh, that is the latest version of Azure UCB Prickly Pike. The software will then be download, uh, downloaded uh, in the following configuration. Uh, in the figure, Meta RVGPU contains the recipe for RVGPU, and Azure RVGPU uh, contains the feature to use RVGPU on Azure. Now the software is downloaded. From step three to step six, uh, it is about build and boot the AGL demo image. And step three, uh, initialize the environment variables and pass settings in the build environment. Uh, if you add the AGL RBGPU feature uh, when initialized, RBGPU is installed in your build. And step four, uh, customize your build, uh, customize your build uh, referring to Azure documentation. Uh, here, uh, no specific operations are required. Uh, step five, build your Azure image. Uh, currently, RBGPU uh, supports Azure Demo Platform and Azure Image Western and so on as Azure Demo Images. Uh, here is the example command of building Azure Demo Platform. And step six, uh, once the build of the AVGL image is complete, uh, deploy images on each platform you, pre uh, you prepared, uh, referring to the AGL uh, documentation. 
Here is the URL of deploying Azure image on x86. Okay, finally, in step seven, I will introduce how to use RBGPU commands. Uh, in the use case here, uh, Unified HMI renders sample application uh, that is running on sensor to remote display of receiver. And here is an example of an experiment um, with Ubuntu as the sensor and AGL on each platform as a receiver. And please check our GitHub documentation on how to use RBGPU on Ubuntu. Only main commands are uh, GitHub. Uh, only main commands are shown here. So, uh, but several setting commands are required to run RBGPU. And so, please check our readme documentation uh, in Meta RBGPU directory on how to use RBGPU on SGL in details. And first and second commands uh, run RBGPU render on the receiver side and run RBGPU proxy on the sender side. And RBGP proxy specify the window size of application and the receiver's IP address and connection port. And RBGP renderer specify application window size and connection port. And when these commands are complete, a DLM device card X is created and RBGPU is connected to the network. Okay, uh, third command, uh, run Western applications uh, with specifying the DLM device card X uh, that is created by RBGPU. And the Western application is rendered in the receiver display. And next fourth command, uh, run Wayland application uh, while, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, while Western application is being transferred uh, the Wayland application can be rendered in the receiver side. And here you can see that uh, the GLMAC2 applications, uh, which is not installed in SGL by default, uh, uh, this is rendered in the receiver display. Okay, while application graphic is rendered, application is running on the sender side. And this, conclu uh, this concludes introduction of uh, how to use RBGPU on SGL. But what is described here is just an example. Uh, for example, SGL can be configured as a sender to transfer an SGL application to another Linux hardware. And therefore, we think that the value of SGL can be enhanced as Unified HMI expands. And if you are interested in Unified HMI, please try learning and playing with it uh, by referring to our GitHub documentation. Okay, final section, I will provide the future vision of Unified HMI. Uh, we are currently uh, targeting the following three activities to achieve more flexible virtual display framework with Unified HMI. The first, uh, first activity is expansion to uh, support a uh, flat application as mentioned in our activities on SGL. The second is enable uh, applications graphics to render in and out uh, between Linux and the other OS. Uh, currently, a remote trans a remote transfer of application is possible only between Linuxes. But in the future, uh, we'd like to support transfer applications from Linux to Android and from Android to Linux. The third is to extend Unified HMI to more media, for example, audio and video. Uh, currently, only graphics are supported, but in the future, we'd like to expand the media that can be controlled by Unified HMI. Okay, let's work together to create an ecosystem to, new value, uh, to enable new values of UI and UX in the multi-display environment with Unified HMI. 
And this QR code is GitHub page about Unified HMI. And if you are interest, uh, interested in Unified HMI, please access it and give it a try. Okay, finally, uh, let me give you a preview of the future development uh, for Unified HMI. Uh, we are going to show a demonstration about uh, cloud-native Unified HMI at AGL booth in CES 2024. Uh, the cloud-native Unified HMI technology uh, enables designing, uh, developing, and validating cockpit UI and UX. Uh, without depending on underlying hardware architectures. Uh, it empowers developers to rapidly and efficiently create cockpit UI and UX, uh, which leads to software-defined digital cockpit solutions. Uh, we are planning to exhibit a demonstration at CES 2024 to, so, uh, to show such values, and we would be delighted to meet you uh, there as well. Okay, I'd like to conclude my presentation here. Uh, thank you for listening. Is there any question or comment? Okay. Uh, is there any uh, limitation or uh minimum requirement for the remote processor or, or the local processor that which, is, which is rendering 3D graphics uh, for, I don't know, having a glitchless communication and no delay and no lag? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, this is, uh, there is, um, there is a minimal uh, limitation. Uh, for example, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, using uh, ECUs uh, is con uh, include the BAT IO uh, and uh, graph uh, drawing performance uh, will be decreased, so such as frame rate, uh, network speed, uh, by uh, depending on applic uh, using application or network environment, but, uh, but uh, the performance will be, uh, uh, for example, frame rate is maintained on 60 FP, uh, FPS. And so in automotive quality, uh, this, this limitation is so, uh, and there is, uh, uh, sure, uh, it is sure that uh, there is a limit, uh, limitation for performance, but uh, it is a useful technology, I, I think. Okay, so. Let me give a, some follow up explanation. So, I think uh, uh, regarding your question, so basically, um, two points need to be considered. First one is the connection between the two ECUs. So, you, you, you need to probably. Um, and, and enable a, a high-speed Ethernet so that the, the communication itself is smooth. The second one is that uh, uh, when you check in the architecture, actually it's uh, transferring the GPU commands or say the OpenGL commands. So that means when you, um, when your original data have, uh, 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 original, I mean, rendering contents has a lot of texture. So in that case, probably it's the performance, there will be some overhead. But for most of the cases, um, it should be guaranteed with the 60 FPS. Yeah. Hi, uh, so thank you for your presentation. And uh, I just, I uh, want to clarify the minimum, the, like the previous gentleman said, the previous spec, uh, minimum required specs of uh, CPU. And because the all the rendering of the one unified uh, HMI is done on the server side CPU and the rest of CPU is just receiving the image. Is that 
correct? Uh, uh, unified HMI also depends on GPU performance. So CPU performance is so. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah GPU performance. Yeah. So only the server side CPU SOC is yeah. related to rendering the whole frame buffers of the image. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, CPU uh, is. Uh, yes, it is correct. Uh, so, uh, so the, uh, the, the remote, the, the remote ECU. So um, it will be the GPU on the remote side will be rendered the contents, but the application itself is run uh, is uh, running at the local ECU. So that means the um, you still need a, a computing resources on the uh, sender side. Uh, yeah. So. On the receiver side, uh, we still can utilize the DRM device as a rendering device. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you. Is there any more question? Okay, there's no question. I, I conclude my presentation. Thank you.